you wanted to hold this to let everyone know, I mean, you want, the big point today was there was not, there has not been a crime committed. Can you explain that? Well, in this county. In Seminole County, um, when Madison Marshall left Cromwell for two children, ages two and seven months, she is a custody mother of these children, and she hadn't been committed no crime. And this is kind of an ongoing, off and on deal between her and the father. Um, at that point, we didn't even know that she was gone. Um, after a couple of days, dad found out um, from the sister of Rome Waters, that who's the next boyfriend of Madison, they had departed Ofushke County and had went to Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, so when we was notified, we had no information and nothing that we could issue an Amber Alert. They didn't meet the qualifications. They was with their mother. She is has custody. There's no court orders. Um, and there was no proof that they was in danger. Um, the information that we received that she abandoned the two-year-old at a house in Indianapolis and was seen carrying um, Oakley out of the house saying that she was hurt and needed to go to the hospital. Um, according to Indianapolis, she never made it to the hospital. And then on the timeline that they was, Rome was arrested in Colorado in a motel with Madison and there was no child. Um, he was arrested on outstanding warrant from Olfusky County that was not connected to this case. Um, and then Madison had hitched a ride back to um, Indianapolis and then from there, um, some friends from North Carolina had bought her a bus ticket to go to North Carolina. Indianapolis actually got a warrant for her for child abandonment in Indianapolis. And that is what she was arrested on. Um, the whereabouts of Oakery is unknown, but she, the last sighting that she of her was in Indianapolis. Um, and I think that was on February the 9th. And so we have no crime that's been committed in Seminole County um, in conjunction to either child. And we just want the public to know that any information needs to be going to Indianapolis. And um, that's where the charges would be filed at. Um, the social media has got this, all people think that she was seen here and she wasn't. I mean, the last known when she was seen was right over the night up there. Um, we, we have no knowledge of where she's at. We just know that she did not make it to the hospital that night. And then she was not with Rome or the mother when they, Rome was arrested in Colorado at a motel. So. We do know that Rome has family in Indianapolis and there's some property up there. Um, we have taken voluntary DNA from the father just in case we need it. Um, but even here, we don't have enough to get a search warrant to get DNA from mother or from Rome because of no crime being committed in this state. Where was the seven month old found? Our understanding, it was abandoned at a house in Indianapolis at um, what was described to us as a crack house. Um, and that's just the information that we're getting from investigators up there. And that was on February the 9th as well? Yes, that's when she left with um, Oakery to say that she's taken to the doctor. She never came back. Then, These people actually called Indianapolis and said, hey, we've got a little seven month old baby that's been abandoned here. Would you come and get him? He is now back in custody of daddy here in Oklahoma. And we are in contact with dad um, most days. Um, investigator Steve Williams talks to him almost on a daily basis. We just kind of wanted to clear up some of the social media posts about a crime being committed here and that she was last seen here, which is false. When the witnesses um, who reported to Indianapolis authorities, their last <laughs> sighting of Oakley, um, we kind of talked about this earlier. Was she alive? They do not know. The mother was carrying her to the car and they described it. She was either asleep or unconscious. She wasn't moving. She was wrapped in a blanket and the mother made a statement, I got to get her to the hospital. She's been hurt. And that's basically all we know as far as that. So um, 
we, we do have a number for an investigator, Nick Hubbs. It's H-U-B-B-S from the Indianapolis Police Department. The phone number there is 317-496-4546. Um, and we'll take any information from anybody here if they know something and forward that to them. But um, they are the lead investigation on this case at, at Indianapolis. And we feel that's where the information needs to be directed to. Um, and, you know, sure, if we find out anything that, you know, there's been a rumor that she was brought back here, um, we cannot confirm that. And um, it's a possibility, but not according to the dad. Um, he's not seen her. So um, uh, it's our belief that she's probably somewhere still in Indianapolis. Um, and like I said, we can't confirm her if she's alive or not. So I did have a question. So if my memory stands correct, it was from an affidavit in November of last year, whenever the first kind of altercation took place where they found Roan and Madison and the kids, um, where Madison had said that she had allegedly been hit. He also struck the child. You know, what kind of went from that to them being able, I guess, to leave? Like, I guess, how did that play out? Is that a Seminole County case? It may have been Oak Fusky, but I didn't know if you guys were involved. No. Okay. If it was been an Oak Fusky County case, I think that may be what the warrant was issued mm -hmm. that he was arrested on. I think his warrant that he was arrested on was domestic violence mm -hmm. in front of a minor. Mm -hmm. But that would have been an Oak Fusky County case, which would have been handled by their district attorney and then DHS. So we wouldn't even had knowledge of that. Oh, okay. You guys wouldn't have been involved at all? No. Okay. So it's just... Days are passing, and we assume the 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 custodians of these children are taking care of them. But we there's just no information either way of what's exactly happening, and and that's why it's Indianapolis. It's an open investigation for them. Well, but based on the child being abandoned in Indianapolis, that's where that that case. That's why they would have to file for a warrant up there, um, and they're asking known sightings for carrying. And, her to the car, taking her to the hospital, and then they ended up in Colorado. We have no information that anything else took place in Seminole County, so it's kind of hard for us to even go in a direction to find, because as far as we know, when they left January the 19th, they have not been back to Oklahoma. Has Madison been cooperative with authorities? I could not tell you that. I don't even know if she's been extradited back. She has that, whether she waived extradition, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say we was told that Rome is fighting extradition back to Fusky County from Colorado. Um, he's demanding that they get a governor's warrant, and that's what we was told, but I, I don't know that to be a fact. So I don't know whether she has signed a waiver to come back from North Carolina to Indianapolis now. Um, and investigator Hubs probably could answer that better than I could from there. Do we know where they're being held? Right now, where they're being held, Rome and like the facilities, I guess, where they're... I still didn't hear you, ma'am. Do we know where they're being held? Um, I'll, I'll just know that Rome was arrested in Colorado, Motown. I don't even know what county okay. he was in. Okay. Um, you would have to check old Fusky County because that would be up to them to extradite him back okay. to Oklahoma. Okay. And again, we, not if we're just talking to him, we wouldn't even know if that, when that would happen or not. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, just something curiosity, um, when when uh, when I hear about children being taken across state lines, to me in my mind that triggers federal investigation. Um, but with everything that's been st decided so far, it's all in Indianapolis. So, as with the information we have now, there's not enough to bring in a federal agency. Well, that would be end up in Indianapolis because I mean, when they left Oklahoma and crossed state lines, there had been no crime. Been right. So, um, I mean, it's it's not against law to take your kids across state line, and so a uh, crime's been committed. And so the crime, the first crime that would have took that we can verify that took was in Indianapolis when she abandoned mm -hmm. the seven month old. So that would trigger that investigation. So that would be up to Indianapolis. And I, I will quote, I think maybe the FBI in Indianapolis is involved in this. Okay. But 
Um, again, that's what we was told. So, but you know, we had no crime here when they crossed state lines for us to notify FBI. Mm -hmm. okay. What was um, the seven months old? What was his condition when he was? Uh, was he okay? I do not know. Um, I know talking to the dad, or I didn't talk. I yeah, um, investigated with him. Talked to the dad the other day when he went and got him, and he appears to be fine. Um, and I think the people at the house, he was abandoned. Um, whether it was a crack house or not, did the right thing for calling and, you know, uh, probably knew they couldn't care for a seven month old and, and probably really didn't want to be involved in anything. So, um, thank you. Okay. So Indiana is the investigating agency and that was not Indiana talking. So I will keep you guys posted with updates. I just wanted to give you guys the full press conference. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Let's keep Oakley's name out there. Have a great night.